Hello everyone, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. This is version 0.1.4.0 for reference. And yesterday, the Kerbal Space Program Twitter account posted weekly challenge number 30, Explore Kerbin. And the primary goal was to build a jet to explore Kerbin from the air, fly over water, shores, grasslands, and highlands. Secondary was to go a little bit further and explore the mountains and deserts. Uh, Jeb level was to fly over Kerbin's polar ice caps. Val level, circumnavigate Kerbin and Tim C level fly the length of the river to the north of Kerman's Desert. So I didn't quite get that one. Uh, in comparison to the others, they all seem to be building up further. Uh, but anyway, I decided to just go for Circumnavigate Kerman because I had previously attempted to do that before with the Sakura aircraft, and that was the one using two Goliaths, which was very distinctive. I mainly did it because it amused me to have such a distinctive plane. This time I wanted to go fast, though uh, well, we had a little bit of an issue with uh, the whiplash to the right there as we didn't have enough intake here. I used the small conformal intakes first. We will change the uh, uh, shot cone intakes in a bit, but I wanted to see what I could get away with with these. And they didn't do too badly, actually. I decided to use the Mark II cockpit because it looks better. And also, it might have some lifting body effect, I don't know. Uh, the Mark I cockpit would be lighter. But I decided to go with this because it looks mainly and it would fit the Mark II uh, fuel tanks a lot better. Otherwise I tried to be very careful about mass so the landing gear is a small landing gear, the wings are all small wing pieces. And here we are at the pole, so a quarter of the way through the journey because the KSC is at the equator and the pole would be one quarter of a circumnavigation. But we've used more than half of our fuel here and so it wasn't looking like we were going to make it. I was making a turn so that we would stay in daylight and not go into the nighttime side. That's fine for circumnavigation as far as length is concerned. But since we weren't going to make it, I decided to try a few other things. And the first was to try just one jet and see if that would be more efficient. The critical thing is we need to get past the speed of sound with this. And then after that, hopefully it would be smooth sailing. I don't know what kind of maximum velocity we would get. You can see the small landing gear there. And so we have to be very careful about taking off here but we manage it even with the one jet. And of course it might get better intake air like this, but acceleration was anemic and as far as getting past the speed of sound, it didn't seem like it was likely to. I mean, if we got to a higher altitude, it might have been able to, but I wasn't thrilled with the situation. So I decided to revert this one. Going back to the two whiplash one, we needed more fuel, of course, and so I put the fuel tanks between the nose gear and the main landing gear so that when we rotate, they won't rip off. We could put them on top or on the wing tips or something like that, but this seemed most streamlined. And of course, I put the shot cone intakes on them, uh, which seemed like the logical thing to do. Uh, we needed more air, clearly, because we had lost one engine before, and so I removed the conformal intakes from the tail. So this is a dangerous sort of situation and of course the suspension on the wheels me meant that we were really scraping the ground there and yeah we lost the engines and those fuel tanks as a matter of fact. I don't know exactly how that part happened, probably the suspension. And so yeah we'll have to try again and we do. Uh, we just have to be a little bit more careful on liftoff. Uh, Bob of course survived that. And so here we go. 24 tons of methane is what we're using. And probably as little wing as I could manage. On the previous flight with the two engine version, it had been a little bit wiggly and I showed that clip but I didn't talk about it. It was wobbly but then stabilized suddenly. Uh, this time I decided to use the trim instead of uh, just straight WS in order to go up or down and that seems to do a little bit better so the trim is alt w and alt s to trim up and down which i should have been doing anyway here we are sort of past the speed of sound but really to decisively break the sound barrier i needed to pitch down a bit give up some altitude we need to be going about 450 meters per second before we can continue climbing and so that's what I do. We get to 450 at about 5,000 meters. And then I start climbing again. So we're through the transonic drag. And we can continue accelerating. And we do. And it was pretty smooth past Mach 2 here. 8 kilometers in altitude. 
Now, I wasn't trying to hit the particular biome specifically. Uh, we were trying for a polar circumnavigation. So this is going up to the pole, North Pole, and then coming around to the South Pole, and then getting back to the KSC. And that would guarantee a full circumnavigation. So here we are at the North Pole. That's why the camera is changing and our compass on the nav ball is changing. And we do try to stay in daylight following the Terminator around. The shock cone intakes allowed us to cruise at a better height, but basically we're cruising at the same speed, 1300 meters per second. And here we are at the equator on the opposite side from the KSC. So this is halfway through our journey. We've used five eighths of our fuel. And so that's about, let's say 62%. Uh, and that's fine actually, because we're getting lighter as we go along. And also it took a lot extra just to get up to speed as we see the moon rising there over the South Pole and looking a lot like the Death Star actually. Uh, very, very Death Star-like appearance of the moon there. But here you go once again, uh, changing to heading north instead of heading south and trying to aim at the KSC. Thanks to 2x Time Warp for most of that, we were very quickly close to the KSC as you can see here and it was time to slow down and descend we still had a reasonable amount of fuel left and so i felt pretty good about the approach i had not tried to land this plane so far nor had i landed in this version and remember we have the small landing gear so it is a bit touchy i didn't want to break everything apart so and i've had weird landing gear issues before that's for sure so uh, i was still nervous in that respect but not about the fuel so KSC to our right there. I would have also liked uh, more daylight here, but as it turns out, based on our takeoff time, uh, the KSC was a bit in the dark, not fully in the dark, but sort of in the sunset. And here we are alongside the runways and we'll have to turn around. We uh, descended very late, but also the lower atmosphere is very soupy, so I wanted to take that carefully. It really slows you down quite a lot. And I use a lot of thrust just to maintain speed down here. So after about an hour long trip around Kerbin, we are approaching to land with Bob here. Uh, they have a Jeb level, they have a Val level, they have a Tim C level, but they never have a Bob level. The Bob level should be something amusing though. And the build level should be very scientific, I guess. I don't know. No, the Bob level would be scientific. Build level... Hmm. We'll have to think about that. Anyway. Here we are. Coming in and... Trying to be very careful here. It is a very long runway, so I was taking my time. And actually, we were so gentle, I wasn't entirely sure when we actually sat down. I guess right there. But it took me a little bit to realize that we had actually gotten our feet on the ground. And we didn't scrape the fuel tanks. That was good. So, that was that. We completed the circumnavigation. And this plane is capable of doing that. So, that is good to know. So as far as the stats are concerned, when we recover vessel, it showed those stats. Uh, more than 4,000 kilometers traveled. I don't know where all the Gs came from. Highest speed overall, 1,375 meters per second. And you can see the total flight time uh, by an hour and two minutes. So with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.